morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Vrindan. Um, I represent uh, D.Y. Patel University uh, from Navi, Mumbai. And uh, good morning to everyone. Luckily, we are from Mumbai, so we didn't have to travel. But those who are, who've traveled, uh, uh, it's a best time uh, to be in Bombay. It's nicer. It's not so hot. So uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, just to lead on to Martin's uh, presentation, uh, uh, he mentioned about uh, the te teaching cultures. Uh, so slightly different in India, I'm sure everyone agrees. Uh, there's a lot of respect and people choose to be in uh, the education uh, uh, profession as a teacher for 30, 40 years, so, which, is, which is an upside uh, for us. Uh, so when we uh, have used Moodle in our university, we've seen that uh, passion um, in our teachers, but agree uh, there needs a lot of support from all, all areas for them to be successful. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly uh, uh, give an overview of what we are, because most of us uh, here wouldn't know. Uh, so we are based out of Maharashtra. Uh, the three key verticals in our business is uh, education, healthcare, and sports. Um, our founder, Dr. D.Y. Patil, started this uh, in 1983. Uh, today, we have more than 150,000 uh, plus students, uh, four universities, 10 campuses. Uh, we have all, ch all hospitals in the form of charitable hospitals. So they are not for-profit hospitals, um, and yes, more than 150 uh, programs. Uh, that's the president for DY Patel Group, uh, who's running the show today. Uh, unfortunately, couldn't make it today, uh, but uh, a lot of uh, inspiration and motivation comes from him. Uh, Moodle was encouraged uh, under his leadership last uh, past two and a half years back when we started. Uh, so. Uh, we will just play a short video uh, to give you a, a small overview of uh, what we've done so far. Yes. The restriction of a classroom could limit a student's ability to learn. To help a student learn without boundaries, DY Partly University introduced a customized learning management system, MyDY. MyDY provides a unique platform for the students, faculties, and the administration to interact with each other. As a result, the faculty and administration can manage the teaching process to provide the best learning experience to the student. With MyDY, a student can learn at his own pace by planning his studies, assess his performance with customized feedback from the faculties, and seamlessly communicate with the faculty and staff to accomplish his or her academic goals. Students can get information regarding lecture notes in the form of presentations and case studies to reinforce the understanding of a topic. Reference reading material provides links to an online journal or article and reference video showcases information from subject experts and industry professionals. Students can check for semester-wise syllabus and subjects for the entire course and plan their studies by taking advantage from previous year's question papers and question bank uploaded by the faculty. The student also stays updated about his daily attendance status as the faculty can mark attendance online. My DY also assists students to apply for an exam online, pay fees online, and save their hall ticket and payment receipts in their emails. The faculty can assess assignments uploaded by the student on My DY to provide customized individual feedback while keeping a digital record of the same to avoid extra paperwork. The learning analytics in My DY allows the faculty to track, comment, and report on how the student is progressing and monitor the consistency in performance development. As the administration is also on board for MyDY, the online notice board and calendar is updated with official information about holidays, conferences, seminars, events, and academics, so the students can manage their day-to-day -day proceedings. MyDY also allows the students, faculties, and administration to contact each other effortlessly with the help of the query window, without the need to share any personal contact information. At DY Patel University, we believe one can bring innovation in education only when students, faculties, and the administration work towards a common goal. Thank you. So uh, I think the video was a summary of um, all what we've done so far. Uh, but it wasn't easy. Uh, I think uh, I just met a few people. So we started this two and a half uh, to three years back. Uh, quite a shift uh, in terms of uh, the mindset of how you teach. Uh, so we had a lot of challenges on the way. Uh, uh, a lot of faculty and head of departments 
had to be explain the value uh, within it, and we had to customize at every stage. So we have a few slides that kind of run through the same information. Uh, key focus was students uh, and faculty to make sure learning process is um, uh, at the center. Most of the softwares, most of the tech uh, that we saw otherwise was towards an ERP for the management to keep track of uh, the back end. Well, there's heaps to do that, but we wanted to touch space where uh, teaching and learning is, is benefited. Uh, in terms of administration, uh, key deliverables were you know, advanced learning methods, effective communication. You've seen the video. Don't want to repeat the same thing. Uh, in terms of uh, faculty, uh, content sharing, um, having dis discussions with students. So even here we had uh, a few faculty that were really um, uh, technologically advanced and they wanted to use this uh, to their advantage and they came up to us to understand how they can interact more with their students. So apart from classroom teaching, they had their own discussion forums uh, where they initiated uh, conversations for students to ask after class questions. Some of them are shy to ask questions in the class. Uh, whereas there were some faculty who just didn't uh, want to adapt uh, to this sort of uh, a learning. They just wanted to um, stick to their original way of teaching. Uh, so to that, what we did is uh, we had both of them uh, to meet and talk to each other uh, to understand how easy it is and how it kind of relieves you from uh, having more contact points. So it's still, I would say, not that we've achieved it, it's an ongoing process uh, for staff and faculty to understand values. Uh, some colleges have a lot of benefits. So in terms of our uh, uh, students, we are almost 10,000 plus students on Moodle right now. Um, we have a lot of health science courses. So we have School of Medicine, uh, which runs MBBS and BDS, which is um, doctors and dentists. So uh, to offer content on an online platform is a little challenging over there uh, because most of their learning is uh, on job, like probably on, uh, on an operation theater or things like that. Uh, but there are partners in India which uh, through eAbhyas e e we've tried to integrate uh, that have uh, content related to health science courses. Uh, on the contrary, we have an engineering college which is, uh, you know, more classroom-based uh, learning and they understand tech. A lot of faculty are, uh, you know, uh, advanced engineers themselves, which have no problem uh, using the system. So point being, uh, every uh, course has its own challenge, which you've faced, and we are still evolving in, in the process. In terms of students, uh, yes, attendance uh, is, is the key uh, aspect in, in India. Um, so we have faculties pushing in SMS notifications, just saying, hey, you're just falling back in terms of your attendance. Um, also, in terms of uh, a number of weeks uh, remaining for your exams, so just two weeks to go to the exams, question papers already on Moodle. So we're trying to push as much uh, in terms of uh, notifications through email or SMS to the students. Uh, other aspects like online fee payments, uh, notice boards, all those um, go hand in hand. These are um, a most uh, used um, areas by students, lecture notes, assignments, case studies, uh, quizzes, question banks, papers, additional reading materials, uh, videos and discussion forums. Um, another institute, which is, which is our management institute, uh, institute sorry, um, doing BBA and MBA, uh, very friendly to the system uh, because most of the content is also available in open format. So we just allow YouTube links or uh, any other links that are out there as free to be put up on Moodle so that if, if a faculty struggles to cover a particular aspect in that 90 minutes, the student can still go watch the video which is hosted in some other platform. It's just giving enough uh, information. Uh, four, four, four phases uh, in the last two and a half, uh, three years. Um, sorry for the small fonts, but if you see, uh, we started at 216 uh, students, a lot of permutation combinations, and as of today, we have more than 10,000 uh, odd students on board. Uh, these are a few learnings. Uh, wouldn't want to read through all, but uh, the most uh, important was um, the students were very proactive uh, uh, in terms of what they want. 
Uh, as Martin mentioned, uh, we all are on Facebook, uh, and the students age group 16 to 21 probably are more active on social media and WhatsApps and all, all the apps. So we also felt the need that we should be on their mobile devices and not urge them to go on a desktop to log in to get their content. So we have uh, also, also initiated the app. Uh, we have content streaming through the app. Uh, we have a few uh, uh, pictures of that as well. So the app is uh, live from the last six months. We use the same Moodle app uh, uh, that is available for us. Um, it's almost uh, similar to the desktop version, uh, but here we have uh, crisp information in terms of uh, what's most relevant for them. Uh, yeah, timetables, notifications for the week, um, assignments coming up, attendance falling back. Uh, also, uh, if they want to go and read through the presentation that is about to begin for the week, it's available in terms of uh, a reader, which they can just read on their mobile uh, before the lecture or after the lecture. So we've done all these um, integrations, uh, still a lot of learning. Um, there's a lot of feedback that comes from students throughout uh, in, in terms of what they want uh, and what fa faculties want to deliver. Um, we also, uh, I've not included that slide, but I'm just gonna speak about it uh, uh, quickly, uh, is we're trying to uh, pick up some information on gamification. So there are a few faculties from the engineering college collaborating with our MBA faculty uh, they're trying to devise uh, uh, some sort of a gamification backend, uh, wherein students that are most active on LMS or who participate and have the most engaging results on LMS have some sort of uh, 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 coins or points, uh, which they can redeem in uh, probably canteens or sporting areas or other. Same thing for faculty. Uh, we're trying to in integrate performance reviews of the HODs uh, of how well the faculty is rated by the student in terms of uh, what is offered apart from classroom learning. So again, um, ongoing process. I wouldn't say we've, we've reached 100% uh, because it's not just one IT department or one faculty. It's a collaborative effort between students, faculty, and us. Um, and we are evolving in the process. So uh, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing at DIY Portal. And thank you. That's about it. Thanks. Any, any questions? Thanks. Oh, sorry. Can you make a little more elaborate about the gamification? To be honest, no. Uh, but uh, what we're trying to do is um, uh, some of the students that are very active, uh, they have come up with these ideas of uh, making sure other students are aware, because awareness is one thing. Uh, the way of teaching and learning we have here is more exam specific, unfortunately, in India, rather than voluntary learning. Probably 10, 15% of the students are those. So gamification is in the form, let's say there are 12 presentations in a strategic management class, and there are 12 quizzes to that, right? The first 10 takers of the quiz are probably recognized in some form or the other, right? It's just kind of probably end of the week, or the principal of the college could probably recognize saying, these are the 10 most active students. It's not a rocket science to take a quiz. The other 90% can also do the same. So just creating more uh, awareness and excitement for the 16 to 21 year olds so that they can come on board and do more. Uh, what content? To what extent do the faculty uh, contribute content to this yeah. uh, platform? So uh, what we have done is, uh, I'm just gonna go a few slides back. Uh, every college uh, has recommended uh, a nodal officer for uh, MyDY. We, so we call it MyDY uh, as the name of the app. And that uh, coordinator goes to each and every department and these are the things that the faculty uh, should be prepared with. And most likely they have lecture notes, they have case studies. Uh, some of the courses, like if you talk about health sciences, right? So this is a no-brainer for an MBA faculty, right? Easy. Uh, engineering, very easy. 
But if you go to a dental faculty who's a dentist or an MBBS faculty who's a doctor or probably is half of the time in an OT, they couldn't spend time on doing this and the quality doesn't come out in a PPT for a doctor versus what they do on the table. So we have a, a, a model for that as well. We have a BBA hospital management students as interns who work half the day with them just to understand how they feel would be the best uh, to do a presentation. And they actually make presentations for them. Uh, they actually collate all the YouTube links from other resources. They do all the hand-holding for them and upload it. So we try and ensure all these aspects are in there for uh, every faculty. Uh, it is a fight. I wouldn't say it's easy. Uh, uh, to a point that uh, it is perceived as um, additional work for no reason. And uh, with all due respect, teachers have been teaching this subject for the last 25 years, uh, when probably I was in school. And if I go tell them, hey, this is the new way to learn, they're going to be like, hold on, boss. I know what I'm doing. So uh, it, was, it is literally one-on-one. -on -one. We have to just tell them, this is no additional work. We'll give you resources. Uh, we'll work with you. This is just to make you feel even better, give you more tools for the students, so that students get more content from you. So, Again, ongoing process. So it's part, uh, uh, part uploaded with the help of whatever students and all. And part of it is still lecture, you're saying. So, uh, Or this is a supplement to the lecture. Yes. So everything is classroom teaching. Everything stands as, <coughs> everything stands as is. Once that week's content is taught in class, they're supposed to use the back end to upload all this for the students to have it as additional learning resources or to look back on what is taught in the last one week or two. Just one more question, and that is that uh, do the students get an opportunity to upload anything here? No. I mean, other than their own assignments and so on. So far, no. Uh, okay. It's a brilliant idea, but so far, but, no. But, you know, you should consider that. Sure. Because, sure. Uh, I mean, uh, students sometimes come out with a much better explanation than even the teacher can give, you know. I'm sure. So you should think about that. Sure. I also had that, uh, I mean, I, actually it's very nice to know that you are doing a doing lot of things, but I just have one question is, have you made it compulsory for all the faculties of, I mean, who are involved in this to upload? Uh, because as uh, you rightly said, that if you don't have discussions, you have written assignment case studies and discussion forum. So is it discussion forum? continued for that unit or it is just uh, let's see because many times i find faculties retaliate to get into this on online correct because they like as you said they have a lot of time they do not have that much time correct. but this is one very interesting way of engaging students which we have done at university right and i just wanted to check have you made it compulsory for every faculty to contribute yeah so uh, compulsory is a little harsh word, but yes, we try to do that uh, in the best possible way. Uh, so again, uh, the president of our university, Dr. Vijay Patil, is quite young. Uh, so he attends all these meetings with the head of the institutions, with the LMS coordinators, and it's more motivation uh, uh, in the form, let's do this, this is different. And uh, we try and have at least half of these things compulsory. You cannot force someone to have a discussion forum if the faculty is not active. But things like uh, uh, presentations, case studies, assignments, uh, uh, videos. Uh, uh, so we try and, yes, do it subtly compulsory. So in the last two and a half, three years, we as an internal IT department have pushed our management to uh, uh, make it compulsory for all the faculty. Now, I think it's the other way around. Most of the faculty. Uh, it's, it's this way. Um, so a particular college would have 80% of their faculty uploaded everything in their first two weeks of the semester. Those who have not done it is like, whoa, you're falling back. What's the big deal? You know, like some, some of the older faculties are doing it. It's a huge thing for the younger, younger faculties feeling, well, if they can do it, why can't we do it? 
So it's a change in uh, the way you think. It's difficult, I agree. Uh, we've taken two and a half, three years for him to understand. That's why we also named it My DY in the interim, rather than saying it's a software. We just call it My DY, so all of us can adapt it. They are using it for their own internal inspections, which is UGCs and NAC, as technology is one of the areas where NAC and UGCs also rate colleges. So it's, it's working in their favor now. Cool. Thank it's you. a lesson plan. Uh, all the lesson plans yeah. are available on the site. Lesson plans of all the lectures. Yes. They are made it by yeah. the lectures. Yes. Yes. And you are using for blended form? No. It is in the blended form, classroom plus online? No. It's only classroom learning. All this is available as additional learning resources or weekly quiz, weekly lectures that are taught in the class are on. Uh, the system. So this system runs parallel to the curriculum in a semester. Let's say 13 weeks, three weeks are gone, three weeks of content will be up for the students to read. Exam coming up, there will be a question paper that will be up. So it's not blended at all. It's, it's not an obligation. It's and. It's not you know, a compulsion that you have to have a part of this year and part of, no. Everything is taught in the classroom. Everything stays as is. This is supplementary. Thank you. Thanks. Just one second. I have a very small question. Going forward, your numbers have gone from 200 to 10,000 students using. Going forward, will it help to reduce the fees? I don't know, that depends on how much my developer charges me. If he's going to do it free of charge, the fees will come down. No, no. See, technology is costly, I agree. Yeah. But the number of users have really gone up. Yes. Uh, that's why I'm asking, because if we have to really do this in India, education has to come down. So, very specific, I'm not uh, saying the technology should come down. As it is, the number of users are large, right? So, so sorry, your question is, would it affect the fees to come down? No, don't, I'm ask, not asking you to reduce, but will you feel it will reduce is what I know. I don't think so, but it will help in reducing the fees as such. Uh, okay. Especially being in, in uh, uh, this, this part of the town, and I am probably uh, youngest in my management, but there's too many bodies in Government of India, uh, Department of Education that have a lot of say in who does how what fees. Uh, there's, there's AICT norms and there's so many other norms. I'm not completely aware. But uh, this cost, being an open source, is not so high, it's not so less. So it doesn't really affect uh, the fee structure model as much. We are not charging students separately for this. It's in the tuition fees. It's within the fees they pay. So it's irrespective. Thanks.